Welcome to the Bible Balance HealthCast, episode number 366, Men on the Cusp Who Don't Need Testosterone Yet. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about hormone replacement therapy for women, which is available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. One of the issues in replacing your testosterone as you begin to age for men, men manufacture testosterone all their lives, but as they age, they manufacture less and less, and therefore their bodies are less and less functional. So there's a window of consideration or change where one has to ask the question, are you on the cusp of needing testosterone replaced or not? Mainly because of the critical issue. If you start to replace your hormones and you replace your testosterone, whatever testosterone your body is still trying to manufacture on its own shuts down. Right. And so you don't want to do that unless it's necessary. Right. So That's, today we thought we would talk mm-hmm. about how you make those determinations, why that is mm-hmm. significant and that men and their doctors ought to know about it and mm-hmm. discuss it. You know, are you at the balance point where you need to say, all right, I, either my naturally produced testosterone is finished or I need to shut it down in order to restore the value that I need to have mm-hmm. for medical reasons. Right. Is that, am I understanding that correctly? Yes. That it's, it's, a, it's a continuum. Not every man goes through this. Mm-hmm. Many men don't get symptoms from their low testosterone until they have reached a point where there's no coming back. They're over 50. They're, I can't stimulate their own production. So, so there are things that you can do. If I'm still making testosterone and I'm young enough and I haven't reached that point, there are things that you can do to reinvigorate my testosterone production, in me- still, still my own natural production. Right. Because and, other things need to be balanced out that are going on in my body. Right. I mean, I'm looking at this as a an either or for right now. Younger men who have symptoms of low testosterone and have a relatively low total and a very low free testosterone, Mm -hmm. oftentimes they're under 50. We can stimulate the production of testosterone by giving um, shots of HCG. So that's human chorionic gonadotropin, not growth hormone. And it stimulates the production of testosterone and oftentimes we can do that for two to three months and then stop and see if that kicks them in to their own production or we can just continue this until they no longer make enough with the proper stimulation just like recharging the battery on a car it's starting Mm -hmm. to lose amperage Mm -hmm. you can recharge it it and boost it back up and, and you don't have to replace the battery right but this also isn't quite as easy as it sounds, because at the same time, many of these men, even though they still make testosterone, they are making more and more estrogen out of their testosterone. So if they are making, they are both, they have a low testosterone, they're symptomatic, and they start making more estrogen, I have to attend to that too. And that means I have to give them a blocker called a Rimidex or aromatase inhibitor that actually causes their testosterone to remain testosterone and not become estrogen. So as we start to age and our testosterone begins to diminish, many of us men become converters and Mm -hmm. we convert the testosterone that we have Mm -hmm. into estrogen, which leads us to problems like man boobs that we don't want to have. It also uses up your testosterone and it also more estrogen binds up your testosterone. So let me talk for a second about total testosterone. We've said, we've talked about this before is everything a man makes, but only a tiny percentage in your bloodstream actually works. It is, it is free to bind to your cells. So we call it testosterone free. So it's only a few percentages of that total. So if you have a very high or even a normal total, but your free testosterone is very low, I look to see why it's, why it's low. Because these men may not be people that need to be replaced either. It may not be that I have to, 
I have to stimulate production of testosterone. I just have to stop testosterone from converting into estradiol or estrone. So that may be a second scenario where a, a younger man or even a kind of in the middle on the cusp guy would just need a medication called Arimidex. And these guys, I've seen three this week and they got so much better. I mean, I didn't without replacing any without testosterone. replacing their testosterone and I'm not advocating that this should be done after 50. I'm not saying that that we can do these miracles without replacing testosterone on everybody, but because I've done this hundreds and th a thousand times, I know who I can do this for and who I can't. And many of the men who have had head injuries are in this are in the situation like football players or concussions. or concussions who have who are in their 40s, they have all the symptoms of low testosterone, their pituitary won't make enough of the hormone to stimulate their testosterone production. So for those guys, I choose HCG. For the guys that have gotten a beer belly and gotten fat and they're using up all their, and binding up all their testosterone, for those guys, I choose a Remedex. Mm -hmm. Some men need both. And there are other things like insulin resistance and diabetes that need to be treated at the same time, or you're not going to feel completely well, which is why we treat everything we can treat to prevent disease in the future. So we always want to remember this is a medical procedure. Right. And you only do those when they're needful. Right. When, that, when they're necessary and that is the least risky, the most benefit, and the best treatment. So that's why I don't do other things. I don't use shots. I had somebody come in and say his doctor swore his testosterone cyprianate, also called depotestosterone, was bioidentical. And he, his doctor promised him it was bioidentical. It is not. I drew, when you draw a testosterone, it kind of look, if you look at the, if you look at the C's. This is like science class. This is science if class. If you draw the molecules out. If you draw out. the molecule out, it's like this little zigzaggy kind of, with a few little uh, side chains. Amino and then, acid chains? and that's, yeah, well, no, they're no. not. They're all, they're, that's different. So th these are made out of um, carbons and hydrogens and oxygens and, and a few other things. So they, it's like a straight chain. And then when you add, when you add on this big lump of cyprianate, that actually makes it not bioidentical, but it's, it's there because shots are supposed to last two to four weeks in your muscle. So they need that cyprianate to keep going through your liver and, and keep um, circulating the testosterone so that you can have not daily shots because that would be pure testosterone or a pellet that is time release. They want you to be able to get one every couple of weeks. So that's kind of what um, um, the T, the low T center does. They do shots. You have to come in every week or every two weeks and they give you that. That's not bioidentical unless you're taking a shot every day in the muscle with, when it's testosterone and oil, that easily could be bioidentical. But we use, but in contrast, we use a pellet that lasts four to six months. I mean, so you don't have to worry about it or be a slave to going to somebody's office, but it's not bioidentical. It causes more dihydrotestosterone. Instead of decreasing your cholesterol, it increases your cholesterol. The shots do. The shots do. Okay. That's why I don't use the shots because it's safer and healthier for us. It doesn't bother your prostate either to, to have pellets. Mm -hmm. So that's what we do. So that's how people choose what, I mean, that's how doctors should choose your treatment in any way, safe, effective, and something you could do that you could actually get your pellets twice a year or three times a year rather than go into an office every two weeks. That's difficult. So that's how we choose. Is the patient going to really do it? So if you're, if you're well, going to use creams and gels and you don't do it, then you're not getting anything, but you're going to come back to me and say, it didn't work. It, it also goes to make the point that your practice, Biobalance Health here in St. Louis, mm -hmm. is not a high volume turnstile operation where mm -hmm. one size fits all. You spend sure. a lot of time with your patients looking at their lab results and their symptomology, the way they mm -hmm. present themselves and the concerns that they have, mm -hmm. before you make a decision about what intervention, if any, you want to make. And you right. don't just give everybody that walks in the door testosterone pellets. No, 
I don't. And that's why I, I wanted to talk about this today right? because I wanted to talk about people who may go into another center and just get shots when they could be getting something else mm -hmm. you, that you should go to somebody you trust to say, yes, you need it. No, you don't, because it's a commitment and it's pretty much a lifetime commitment once you start. Now, that isn't necessarily so because your testosterone will come back if you stop treatment, but it may not come back to a level where you feel good. Right. So what I'm trying to do for the men that I think their testosterone can come back to a normal level is actually kick it in the butt and make it and stimulate it for a few months and then see if we've primed the pump and they can make their own. So, so you want them to use their natural testosterone as long as that is working for them. Right. When it is no longer working because it's no longer really available, mm -hmm. so it's bound or it's not produced, mm -hmm. then you want to replace naturally with bioidentical testosterone mm -hmm. what they already have. So, so what's the advantage of bioidentical? Why don't we use that term? Bioidentical testosterone does not have the same side effects. It does, it does not turn into as much dihydrotestosterone, which makes you bald and greasy. It doesn't turn into a, as much estrone. I, I get a lot of patients who come in on shots who, whose estrogen's like greater than my women. Mm -hmm. And they look like it. They have man boobs and a big belly and they're miserable and they're crying. Oh, the emotional symptoms are terrible when they've got a lot of estrogen. I'm crying in meetings. I feel so sorry for them because... Yeah. You know, we feel like that when we have PMS. I felt like that before. It's horrible for a man to feel like that. That's much worse. So, um, so when we see them and we put them on, usually their cholesterol is high, their, their blood sugar is high. We put them on pure testosterone in pellet form. It takes about a month and a half for all this to come down. And they've, and we put them on a Remedex generally yeah. in the pellet or orally, and they generally they get their ma they get their macho back. Well, it's funny, and you they say feel that. more I'm normal. Smiling because I'm remembering a couple that I saw for marriage counseling, and this woman would come in and she would complain that her husband wasn't sensitive. He had no sensibility about mm -hmm. emotional uh, mm -hmm. feelings, and then all of a sudden he started being really teary, and she for some time had said, I want a sensitive man who has some <laughs> I bet she didn't. and some empathy. And <laughs> we so, say that. So we don't mean it. So this guy got teary and started tearing up at the <laughs> odd little things, you know, commercial on TV and all of a sudden he's crying. And her response was to turn to him and say, oh, for God's sake, grow a pair, be a man. <laughs> <laughs> so she didn't want a man that could cry or have sensitivity. Yeah, we just think we do. Or, or at least, you know, what I didn't know then, and I know now I've learned from you, that was a pretty <laughs> strong indication that he was going through this change of life where he needed some testosterone adjustment. Mm -hmm. uh, whether he also needed increased sensibility or sensitivity and better communication skills. Really? Another conversation to be had. That's really, she really meant, and for all you ladies out there, I think <laughs> you wanted more... Um, emotional man. What you really want is a man who will listen to you. What? <laughs> Sorry. Sometimes I just want to throw something. Well, exactly. I have nothing up here. Well, and that's the point yeah. you're making. Good. Right. So you want a man who listens to you and please don't drone on. <laughs> that stops them from listening. They stop listening. So you the have drone to, effect. the drone effect. So, yeah. so, you know, See if they'll make eye contact and talk to you. That's really what you want, not somebody who's going to cry at movies. I mean, that's what we mean. Uh, exactly. It's code. It's code. <laughs> it's code. Yeah. So, so, so there's a list of things in the notes mm -hmm. that, that always that accompany the, the <laughs> podcast that we use that you wrote. You mm -hmm. said before any male patients taking testosterone pellets think that testosterone pellets are for them, they need to consider the facts. And then there's a list of... Uh, criteria that you evaluate right. when you make this decision. Initially. So if I'm deciding they don't need them yet, uh -huh. they have to be under 50 because okay. it just doesn't work after that. They have to have normal genetics like XY chromosomes. There are some men that I do see, God love them, they've got two X's and one Y. And even though they make some testosterone, it's not working. They make a lot of estrogen. I have to stop that and give them testosterone, even if they're very young. Because the excess estrogen is doing the damage. Because they're gene and they're genetic, their receptors uh -huh. are different. And they right. need a lot more testosterone to make them normal. And they can't make it. It's called they, they, it's By called definition, they cannot make enough testosterone to satisfy the receptor sites. Right. And to make them masculine and mm -hmm. to make them 
not have a not have hips and i mean these guys know this early on and there's nobody who really treats them with enough testosterone except, except me or i wouldn't i wouldn't treat them in town there if there was somebody who would do it i would right. i would gladly have them do it but i treat them with enough testosterone and they actually feel like men again or for the and first time like, and they look like they're men. less feminized in their presentation but that's an unusual genetic mm -hmm. abnormality and that other doctors in town know you treat that they know i treat you, you know, right they because they just don't know exactly what to do but right. they can diagnose it right so and i'm i'm glad to take care of these men but i just want to say that that's one of the exceptions you that i would not it's called it's called it kleinfelter syndrome and that's just that's just, just the genetics, low testosterone, lots of estrogen, and uh, there's some maybe infertility. Some people don't have the infertility. So low that they can't. So, uh, but it's usually in, they're usually infertile. Okay. But that that's that's an the exception to this rule. Even if they're under 50, I would not stimulate their testosterone because it so won't work. So they may still be infertile, but they can become more masculine. Right. If you readjust the testosterone. Right. Right. All right. So, um, and that's a trade off they would happily make. I mean, yes. It's no trade off, really. No, it's because really, they already have what they have. They want to be normal, yes. And that's what that's what testosterone makes them is a normal guy, yeah. So, um, the other thing is a man who has normal testicular activity is necessary for me to stimulate his own testosterone. So, if he's had trauma. Uh, that's caused his testicles to be damaged and scarred, or if he's had one or two or one and a half of his testicles removed for some reason, or one didn't develop or drop or drop then or that damages them as well, yes. then it isn't always possible to make that testicle do the job of two. And it isn't always possible to get the same amount of testosterone that that man needs. Every man needs a little different level. So I, I'm not promising it to those guys either. But, but you begin approaching their treatment with HCG and, uh, not this guys. Uh, I don't do it with those guys because it never has worked for me. Okay. And in the articles, it doesn't work. So I don't want to frustrate them more I just know it's not going to work for them. Right. And so I'm not going to frustrate them. I'll replace their testosterone. They so very need their testosterone and replaced. And if you do that within a matter of weeks, they know the difference. They feel better. That's right. Yeah. Now, if somebody has elevated estrogens and a low testosterone, then low total, mm -hmm. then I would stimulate them with HCG and give them a Remedex. Make more testosterone and release it to be active. Yeah. And I, th if they're under 50, I would do that. Okay. So um, somebody who has, has had a brain injury, a head injury, who has two hormones from the brain stimulate the testicles called FSH and LH. If they're very low, then if I give HCG to the body, it looks just like LH. And it stimulates the testicles to make testosterone. So those guys respond great to this. So the problem for these guys is not in their testicles, it's no. in their pituitary. Right. And you can compensate for that by giving them the shot uh, that will that cause their LH to operate. It actually looks like LH. Uh -huh. Growth, uh, uh, pregnancy hormone looks just like LH to the body. Mm -hmm. So it stimulates the testicles to make more testosterone. So the t testicles are fine. Yeah. They just need to be pushed. And those guys I can't take off. I can't take them off HCG. They have to remain on that. Okay. So, um, and then the, the, the people that have lower than normal free testosterone, sometimes they just need a Remedex. Okay. They don't have to go through the shots and, you know, of the HCG. I, we have them give them themselves. It's sub Q. It's not a big shot. It's a little tiny shot. It's like uh -huh. insulin. It's not intramuscular. Right. It's, it's, in, sub, -Q it's sub Q in the fat. So yeah. it's an easier th thing to give than testosterone. So what we've discussed today is a, a unique subset of men who are not yet 50, but whose bodies are uh, either genetically miswired or not producing enough testosterone, mm -hmm. but they are producing testosterone, which can be stimulated without replacing the testosterone. And the advantage of doing that is you're still making and using your own as long as you can. Mm -hmm. When you can no longer do that because you've aged out of the category or your body has changed, when they start to replace your hormone, it shuts down your natural production mm -hmm. and you just have the replacement testosterone, which is fine for the end product, for the end effect of 
feeling good and being masculine and having virility and, mm-hmm. and all the things that testosterone brings to you, the bioidentical pellets can replace that lost testosterone and your body doesn't miss a step. You don't drop mm-hmm. a stitch. But if your body naturally isn't making it, then you need to consider, uh, if you're under 50, mm-hmm. you need to consider stimulating your body to make it. And there are healthy, functional ways to do that. We just want you to be aware before you make the next step. Thank you for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.